Okay, so we're on. Okay, so then I'm doing this very fast because I've got a second. I am doing crowdfunding, and I want to put this forward because this is kind of fun, and it's kind of cool. Okay, I'm only, let's see, fast. I, how to do this very fast. Okay, we are at a point now in what we could call an issue of scheduling sanity. Okay? Uh, the reason I say scheduling sanity is because most people don't seem to understand that one of the keystones of language is scheduling. Um, we are deciding what we're going to say next. We are deciding what we're going to do next week. In order to make the economy work at all, a schedule or what we could call appointments and follow through need to happen. Okay? Um, this is how you build bridges skyscrapers, this is how you get anything done, is basically with what we could call scheduling. Okay, now, we are on a schedule, which most people don't seem to understand, which is mostly made up of the planet. The planet is on a very old schedule, which we call the calendar, for instance, but now it has ice melt thrown in, plus another, a couple of other things. So there is an ice melt happening on the planet, okay? That ice melt is it's worked its way all the way from Mount Kilimanjaro now to, we'll call it Greenland and the permafrost. Okay. In terms of human behavior on Earth, we have the aimless American election. Okay, the aimless American election is completely aimless. Um, wh what we have is we have a political party now that is literally following a deranged loom, more or less, who uh, believes that the election was stolen from him. This is like, he, uh, if he believes this, he's insane. If he doesn't believe it, he's evil. But what's happening is that the RNC now is following this man, and the Democrats are really not up to speed. They don't seem to see what's happening fast enough to cut this off at the pass. This is an issue of democracy. Democracy is very, I hope, uh, how would we put it? Democracy, especially with the weapons that we have on hand and our position in the world, we don't get to go back in time and do this again. We're on this schedule now. We're on the planet schedule and we're on our democracy schedule and how this is, this has a great deal to do with human behavior. The animals aren't really voting, but they are gonna have to participate. Three, what's happening also is we could call, we could talk about communications technology. There's a schedule for that. It is evolving at a certain rate. Technology is now uh, moving in two directions. One, to consolidate political and economic power, and two, to go to Mars. I don't know why zillionaires want to go to Mars, but they really do want to go to Mars, and they're going to do it one way or the other. On the Earth, what we have is the North Pole. The North Pole has a land area that kind of surrounds it like this with a narrow area here, a wide area here, Greenland sitting here. They're dead set on making this a trade route, trade route okay? And included in this is, of course, satellite observation of what's going on, a base on the moon, and then a viable relationship with Mars. Okay, so they're gonna go to Mars. This is on another schedule, right? And fourth, this is kind of coy and kind of sweet. We have, uh, we could call it Greta's generation. Greta's generation created something which may or may not be useful, but it's the only game in town right now, which is called Fridays for Future. What makes this interesting is that Greta, as of right now, is 18 years old, okay? So she's 18 years old. It means her parents are 36 to 40. Okay, this democratic, or excuse me, this demographic of children educating their parents and parents ed educating their children is directly related to what we could call the economy or the language or whatever of what we have, what we're working on. So we're working on a two to three year schedule here because the melt, or whatever's going on, is a big deal. Let's remember the permafrost makes up a, like this much of 
this area. Okay, Greta's generation. What makes this interesting is that the people involved in the Greta project, or whatever you want to call it, care about education. Um, <laughs> everybody got really agitated when Greta said she wasn't going to go to school, okay? Um, in America and in other countries, maybe that's not such a big deal. I can't see the Trump people getting all agitated because their kids won't go to school. Uh, they really, I, a lot of them can't spell very well, so I don't want to be mean, but that's kind of like how it works. But these are people that basically, we're talking about parents, engineers, teachers, library science professionals, people like that, okay? Uh, in fact, library science is a very good way to put it because that's how you actually kind of keep track of history and other things. But the main thing being is that Greta's big threat was that she wasn't going to go to school. I'm not going to go to school. I, I won't grow up. I'm not going to go to school, damn it, until you fix the climate. That's why she made demands and the rest of it. They took her, because this is Sweden we're dealing with, I guess, she made it to the United Nations by threatening not to go to school because basically the climate, she wanted to change what we we're doing about the climate. And she was talking to leaders. Now I know for a fact that this demographic of educated, caring people, especially with what America has done now with climate, Trump, COVID, Q insane, and other topics, this demographic, 18 up, 40 down, is going, what the fuck? What, excuse me, what, what, what are we going to do? Uh, wh where is the future? Well, we have this attempt to do Fridays for Future. And I like Greta. I think she's very bright um, and very sweet and very cool. She's doing what has to happen. She's like the only one doing a lot of what needs to happen, which is very frustrating. So what have I come up with? Well, I came up with something called, maybe we'll call it Fridays are spoken for. Okay, because for the longest time, I have been incredibly frustrated by the fact that we have 5.2 billion mobile devices on us. We have the most trivial conversation going on on Earth that's ever existed in human history. I don't know what people are talking about. I don't know what they think they're, I don't know what they're doing with these 5.2 billion phones, right? 1% of that is 52 million phones. Okay, 52 million. What's Dave up to? Well, I'm not being, I'm not going to exploit the situation, but I need some money, okay? And I need money to do good things, basically, not bad things. And I'm into this idea of scheduling sanity. And I'm fed up with my peer group. My peer group, basically, I have been going on and on and on about how uh, I have this comic called The Smartphone Story, for instance, um, <laughs> where I've reduced everything down to more or less, how would I put it? Oh, language, phones, scheduling, and frozen water. Okay? Frozen water is the big deal. Frozen water on Earth. If the frozen water goes away, we're, we're screwed. Okay, if frozen water goes away, bad. Very bad if frozen water goes away. So I've come up with a project, which I think is actually kind of cool, which I call, um, Can We Schedule a Difference? Can we schedule a difference? And I am done arguing about whether climate change is man-made or whose fault it is or any of that, because what we need to be is climate ready. Okay? Climate ready. Why do we need to be climate ready? Because these guys are ready. They're ready to go to Mars, right? They have an agenda. We'll call it an agenda, right? Do we want to be on their agenda or do we want to be on our schedule? Okay? That's kind of like the issue. And we, we would like to be climate ready, right? Maybe? Okay, so without going on and on and on about it, what I've got is a goal of uh, $10 a person for what amounts to kind of like a website or whatever, where I'm trying to coordinate action 
It could be causing a trend on Google. It could be anything. Basically, to take poor Greta's strike. She had a strike recently, and it said a few hundred thousand people globally per participated in, in her climate strike. And that was like, maybe true, maybe not, but it should have been more closer to like 52 million, which is 1% of this. There should have been 52 million people participating in a climate strike because the schedule is, that's, what, that's what's going on here. So my attempt in publishing and the rest of it to uh, do something useful has kind of gone to this. And so, in this Can We Schedule a Difference Climate Ready campaign, uh, I'm doing fundraising and other things for $10 a piece. Okay, that's what you get. And what I'm doing is I'm kind of the buddy system. What we need is we need climate buddies, okay? And that's what phone conversations are. And the buddy system has been around for a very long time, and it's used by the Army, and it's used for everybody else who wants to get things done often. They, they, they use the, the buddy system, okay? So climate buddies is a good idea. So what happens is uh, climate, you're involved, you contribute 10 bucks to my uh, climate ready campaign. And this isn't bullshit because what I have is I have another thing going on which I call adequate technology. I'm very into adequate tech. I have some very close friends who are involved in green tech. And the main issue now is that, let's just consider disaster relief, right? There's a man named Amir Lovins. Amir Lovins has an organization called the Rocky Mountain Institute. He, he puts forward this philosophy much better than I can, but he's part of these networks that should, should be working together. Greta and Amir should be working together. Maybe they are, but I don't know about it. Anyway, the issue being is adequate technology, disaster relief, we're going to have disasters. We need to be green from now on. We can't go backwards. These, the bad guys want us to keep using oil all the time for as much as... We're just now going into hybrid. Hybrid is ancient. Hybrid should have happened a long time ago. The revenue stream from the communications... We'll go back to communications. Communications industry, which is really language industry and advertising, okay, to be a little blunt about it, uh, isn't scheduling what we need, and it isn't aiming for green from now on. So green from now on is a very good idea. And another conversation that I have with video people, my video audience, will be about what I have going with this, right? But the main issue that I'm getting across now is that we are on a schedule, a planet calendar, an aimless American situation with elections and democracy, a very strange situation going on with communication tech and the most trivial conversation that's ever existed, and Greta's generation, which is, they're real people. Greta's a real person and her friends are real people. They're all real people. She's gonna, she, her personally, no, but, people her age are going to start having kids, okay? So the parameters for this, for my personal ability to manage things, I am going for about 400,000 people times 10, okay? Because I can manage that. And I have things to do with that, okay? I really do. And I can talk about those in another video. But this kind of is the base for crowdfunding. Um, the first initial amount is $400,000, but then 400,000 is supposed to become 400,000 people, and then multiply by, that by 10, and now we're getting to a budget that's kind of useful in the land of getting real things done, which is about $4 million. Um, but what will be extremely fun, see this is the other part with the communications industry part, why hasn't Google, Google's paying attention, I get ads for the weirdest, stupidest things, because I'm online, and I'm on my phone, and I'll make a mistake, and uh, why is Google, I don't have a car, why is Google sending me ads for car insurance, or anything else, 
you know, I'll, I'll, I'll press a button for the wrong thing, and then I get ads, all kinds of ads for the wrong thing. Google, for what I've been doing with the smartphone story thing and the rest of it now, should be sending me ads, or, well, gosh, you should be talking to Greta, right? I really think Greta and I should at least have one short conversation. Um, the main point being is something is goofy in the land of the agenda, and we want to turn it into our schedule, and we want to have several million people, not uh, a few hundred thousand, uh, what amounts to uh, next year. Let's put next year up here because we don't have a whole lot of time on this schedule. Next year, we want to have several million, not a few hundred thousand. And so that's the crowdfunding, uh, what do you call it? Um, the spin, I'm putting a spin on this, right? Spin. And that's, and that's it for now. Thank you. Um, you're supposed to turn it off. <laughs>